In the past two decades, blended learning has gained significant traction uh, in higher education. Many experts in the field believe that blended learning is the future, if not the present, of education. So uh, now the big question is not whether to use it, but how to use it effectively. There are uh, various ways to go about it, such as uh, integrating online elements into traditional classes or creating entirely new blended courses. However, one challenge we face is that there is not a one-size-fits-all definition for blended learning. This means that uh, teachers might have different uh, interpretations of uh, what it entails and uh, how to implement it. This diversity uh, can be a bit of an obstacle, especially for instructors who are not yet familiar with uh, blended learning. So in this video, we will answer the key questions. What is blended learning? Uh, types or models of blended learning, its advantages and disadvantages, and how can the teachers uh, make the best choice uh, while designing the course. What is blended learning? Well, as the name says, it's a mix of online and face-to-face -face learning. Online components can include video lectures, uh, discussion forums, quizzes, and uh, multimedia resources, while in-person components involve uh, classroom discussions, uh, group activities and uh, hands-on experiences. Most blended learning programs resemble one of four models, rotation, flex, a la carte and uh, enriched virtual. The rotation model uh, includes four sub-models, station rotation, laboratory rotation, flipped classroom and individual rotation. So let's go through each of them. Rotation model involves moving through different learning stations or activities, including online and in-person elements. Students rotate or uh, switch between these stations over a set of period. Think of it like a buffet restaurant. You have uh, different food stations, uh, salads, main courses and desserts. You choose how much time you want to spend at each station, uh, sampling a bit of everything. Similarly, students uh, in a rotation model might spend time working on computers, um, engaging in group discussions and uh, doing hands-on experiments in, in a science class. In the flex model, students have more control over when and where they learn. They often uh, use online resources and they can move at their own pace with educators uh, available for support. Imagine uh, it as a, a gym membership. You can go to the gym anytime you want, uh, choose your workout and progress at your own speed. In the flex model, students might access online lessons and complete assignments when it suits them best with teacher as trainers who guide and assist when needed. In the a la carte model, students take individual online courses alongside traditional in-person classes, which allows them to customize their learning experience. Imagine a bookstore uh, where you can buy individual chapters from different books. Here, students might attend regular classes at school, but also take online courses for specific subjects or topics they are interested in or need extra help with. The enriched virtual mode involves most of the learning happening online, but there are occasional in-person sessions for uh, specific activities or assessments. We can take a cooking class as an example. Most of the time you follow an online recipe and watch videos to learn. But every once in a while you attend the uh, in-class cooking workshop to put your skills to test and get feedback from an expert. These are four main models. Now let's look at the rotation submodels. In a station rotation, students move between different learning stations, 
uh, each offering a unique activity or resource. It's a structured way to uh, blend uh, various learning methods. It's like a carnival with different booths. At each booth uh, there is a different game or activity. Students rotate um, from one booth to another, trying out each game and uh, learning in various ways. Uh, I have a whole video uh, only about station rotation, so I definitely recommend checking it out. Uh, similar to station rotation, lab rotation involves uh, students moving between online learning and hands-on uh, lab work. It's often used in uh, science or technical subjects. Think of science museum. Students start by learning about a concept uh, online and then they visit the museum's lab to conduct experiments uh, based on what they've learned. In a flipped classroom, Students study uh, course materials independently at home, often online, before coming to class for discussions, group works, or uh, problem-solving activities. Basically, it's like uh, watching a movie trailer before going to see the full film. Students watch video lessons or read materials at home to get a preview of the topic, then in class, they discuss, debate, and explore the subject more deeply. Individual rotation is a personalized approach where each student has their unique learning path and schedule, blending online and in-person activities. Think of personalized fitness app. Each user gets a workout plan tailored to their goals and fitness level. Similarly, in an individual rotational model, students receive a personalized learning plan combining online and face-to-face -face activities based on their needs and progress. These models uh, offer various ways to blend online and in-person learning to meet the diverse needs of students and cater to different subjects and uh, teaching styles. As with any educational approaches and uh, teaching methods, blended learning has its own uh, set of uh, benefits and drawbacks. Let's start from disadvantages. I believe the first one is uh, technical challenges, which can hinder the learning process with students and instructors needing to adapt to new technologies. Uh, second, the flexibility of blended learning can be a uh, double-edged sword, as some students may struggle with uh, time management and self-discipline. And uh, finally, pedagogical or instructional shift, because instructors may require training to effectively design and deliver uh, blended learning courses, which can be time consuming. However, blended learning is worth considering as its advantages outweigh disadvantages. First, it accommodates uh, different learning preferences and paces, allowing students to uh, customize their learning experience. Second, the integration of multimedia and interactive elements in online components often result in higher students' engagement. Third, it makes uh, education more accessible as students can access materials and participate in discussions from uh, anywhere with an internet connection. And finally, it's more efficient since it optimizes uh, resources such as classroom space and time while reducing the need for physical textbooks. How to implement blended learning in your program or course? Well, uh, you can choose the scale yourself. You can start small or you can uh, redesign your entire course. Alamari and colleagues define three different levels for designing blended learning. Low impact blend, medium impact blend, and high impact blend. These levels describe the uh, impact of a blended learning design. Uh, on you as a lecturer. In a, a low impact blend, you add extra elements like uh, online questions or uh, Q&A sessions to your current course. This might not fit perfectly with the course structure or learning objectives, but it can make uh, learning better for students with uh, minimal effort on your part. This approach would fit if a teacher has uh, relatively uh, little teaching experiences or low tech skills. 
Uh, main tips and recommendations for low impact blend should be start with a simple online activity like online discussion board or an activity which both you and uh, your students can easily manage. Ensure the added activity uh, is well integrated into the course, focusing on the connection between in-class and online components. Uh, avoid overloading the course with too many tasks and activities and uh, seek students' opinion to ensure clear communication and transparency. If more online activities are needed, consider a, a medium impact approach, uh, which involves replacement. For example, you can replace uh, a traditional on-site lecture with a knowledge clip for students to watch uh, prior to class so that uh, there is more time for interaction during class. But make sure uh, the addition is driven by specific instructional needs, not just for the sake of implementing te technological um, elements. Uh, this approach is suitable for lecturers who already have uh, some experience in teaching and uh, design, but uh, don't yet want to change their entire educational design. The key recommendations would be start by moving a small part of the syllabus online, uh, reducing in-person class time accordingly, scale up gradually until achieving a, a balanced blend of in-person and online elements, and uh, discuss your ideas with colleagues and collect uh, best practices. You don't always have to reinvent the wheel. Of course, um, at this stage, the support of instructional designers, learning designers, or even IT is uh, needed to select appropriate tools and assist in course design. In high impact blend, you fully redesign the course like uh, using the flipped classroom model or station rotation. You should choose activities that match the learning goals, ensuring that everything aligns well. For this approach, it's important to have someone experienced. For example, uh, you can involve educational designers and IT experts. And uh, most importantly, book at least six months, uh, preferably a year, uh, for the course redesign. So um, that's it for today. If you found this video helpful, please uh, subscribe to this YouTube channel, hit the like button and uh, share this video with your peers. See you in the next video.